Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Art of NFT Business. It formerly was Art of Art Business. We have changed it now uh, because our topic is really focused on NFTs. I'm Jonathan Goodman, the host of the Art of NFT Business, and my co-host is Florian Velo. How are you doing, Florian? I'm good. Thank you. Good. This has been a very interesting week, hasn't it? Yeah, really. Amazing. Probably you personally, uh, certainly me personally, but we're really dealing with the NFT world. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, where would you like to start? What topic would you like to pick first? Where should uh, we start? We should start with the Microverse project. Yes. Drop Let's start week. with the... Go ahead. The, 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 the drop last week. Uh, it was pretty, pretty crazy. It's probably one of the most hyped in a good way project that dropped um and yeah it was pretty crazy the way they auction out the their their nfts um you're able to see the screen here the mechaverse screen yeah. uh this was quite incredible uh they had been promoting this launch for Really, as I say to everybody else, from the time that I started uh, researching NFTs, I heard about the Mechaverse. So it has to be six months, you know, at least. Okay. And uh, they finally launched this. And uh, it went in, well, well, first of all, the way that they did it, uh, you know, you had go ahead. You explain it because I backed out. I I had a problem. We'll talk about my whole wallet situation. Uh, really awful uh, thing. I you know we'll talk about that at some point. But but explain to everyone what uh, how MechaVerse went about kind of letting people get access to buy these things. Yeah. So basically, you had to register the day before, twenty four hours before the actual drop um register with your wallet and either your twitter or discord and then you had to select either if you wanted one or two of those makeovers nfts um and then the following day they had a an actual draw which i don't know how they actually picked the people um i personally took i personally like wanted just one and i feel like a lot of people who got um the chance to get those usually like they um they sign up for two uh so maybe if i had done that maybe i had a, a bigger chance to do it but it was it was pretty incredible um so you had once you logged in on uh, on the drop the day off you had like 30 minutes to wait until like they actually tell you yes you're in or no you're not uh floor price was like 0.2 ethereum i think yep Right now, it's like the floor price, like at six something. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Crazy. It's, uh, you know, th this is this is a great point to start talking about my wallet, which has been just an absolute nightmare. I don't know. I mean, I, I, how do you get money into, how did you get your Ethereum into your MetaMask wallet? Um, so first of all, the, the first thing we did was to actually transfer money from my bank account into the MetaMask, which was kind of like difficult. Um, I had to do it like multiple times, try to, to, to use different, um, like was it like wax and something else? I don't know. So I did that once. And the second time I tried to transfer some of the Ethereum I have from Coinbase, my Coinbase wallet to MetaMask, which was much, much, much easier. And the fee was much lower. Yeah. So in speaking to a lot of people, the problem that I'm running into is that I don't have Coinbase. So that you're absolutely right. So you were able to finally move money from Coinbase, your fiat currency money into your wallet using Coinbase at a cheaper and, and just the fact that you were able to do it. This is my whole story. So I have multiple bank accounts with credit cards and, and debit cards and things like that. Uh, none of them, neither my corporate, my personal, my whatever account it was, none of them 
allowed me to purchase, to move any money into a crypto business. That is their hard line. That's their decision. Uh, in fact, I use uh, Ally Bank for my personal. They are supposed to be the most relaxed when it comes to crypto. They didn't let me transfer any money. So since I didn't want to spend time opening up a Coinbase, I wound up calling a friend, sending him money via, uh, I guess it was PayPal. And originally we were going to do a transfer, but then realized that that was going to take three days and I needed the money in there. And we'll talk about this later for, for the Bonji project. Um, and, uh, and, and that's how he then had to transfer the, he had to buy the Ethereum for me and then had to transfer the Ethereum to me. Uh, really an absolute disaster. I'm looking now at uh, banks, crypto banks that can handle my personal, my business. Problem is, is like, you know, then you're, uh, then you're really 100% on the, in the DeFi world. You're, you don't have, you know, my fiat currency would be held in crypto. It, it's a little bit of a risk. It's a big risk. And there's uh, so far, well, what I found is only one company that is this kind of bank that does both business and personal. So it's, uh, it's definitely a headache. And that's why I didn't participate in the Mechaverse because I knew that I was, I, was, I was tired that night anyway, but to transfer money into my account to even just have the point two would have been like a really big, you know, event. It would have taken a lot of time. I mean, it took me now 24 hours to get the, well, now I have, you know, 0.35 Ethereum in there for the Bonji project. But I have a friend who has bored apes and has, you know, all the hot stuff. And he didn't understand. He applied for the Mechaverse and then didn't understand that he had to come back in a half an hour. He thought he was going to get emailed or whatever it was. Uh, and so he never actually found out whether or not he qualified for one of the NFTs. And so he didn't buy one of the NFTs. Yes. You know, all of these different methods, the whitelisting, the, the random, the uh, Dutch auctions, all of these things are just very, very difficult to, you know, for the average consumer to understand and move around in. Yeah, I think I think the, the best thing is to try to get whitelisted in, in one of the projects you really like. I think it's the easiest way to at least secure one of the NFT that you like. Um, yeah. Because like if we if you want to if you want to bridge into the next topic, which is Bungie project, the way they're going to do it with the Dutch auction, which starts like yeah. really really high, but it is worth putting the money in the if you are one of the first two hundred because with your NFT you will secure one of the real world um, sculpture from this artist Brandon Murphy, which is absolutely incredible. And that are actually worth like a minimum of like seventy five thousand dollars, so it, it's it's a fun way to do it. I've never heard of the Dutch uh, auction, which would start at three point three, and every minute or five minute, um, five minutes goes, goes down like point three something. No, like point that. one, point oh, one. Wow. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually betting on everything selling selling out in in the first five minutes, to be honest, because it's such a really cool project with a lot of upside to it, a lot of um, exciting, like exciting art that you can actually win because on top of like, the first 200, every 33 buyers uh, will get also like one of those culture or uh, a one-on-one -on -one painting. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just super excited to to actually get one because we are lucky enough to be whitelisted. So it, it's it's exciting to to be owning one of those projects because the art is cool, and then what they are offering in the future, their roadmap is is pretty solid. Um, the team behind it is pretty pretty solid as well. So it's super super exciting. Yeah. Um... You know, I, I'm still crossing my fingers because there's a couple of steps that have to happen. We are definitely whitelisted, um, but, you know, there's supposed to be a communication coming out in the next 24 hours for us uh, so that we can provide the right information to them. 
Yeah, uh, they, I reached out to them and they were they, they told me that they would reach out to the to the members to the whitelist members uh very soon so okay great great, it, great, great. it's a weird way because they, they are actually doing the public um sale on the 13th which is before the the whitelist which is on the 14th yeah so it's it's pretty unusual but pretty i'll cool. tell you something you know i, I don't want to i don't want to criticize them they're amazing they're giving us the whitelist uh you know that's going to allow us to buy these at 0.25 um, we don't qualify for the statue, uh, but that's okay because, you know, paying 3.3 Ethereum would have knocked us out, would have knocked me out. I'm assuming it would have knocked you out, would have been almost $11,000. Um, and, you know, here's the thing about the Dutch auction and Dutch auctions have taken place in the NFT world. The problem is it, it's actually, so everything that they're doing is kind of reverse thinking of what everyone is doing now, which is you let the white list go first. They grab everything that they want to, whether it's one or two, or in the case of Magic Mushrooms, five. Um, and then the public auction. So you know what's left over. That's reversed here. So, and even even harder is that they're going to do this Dutch, Dutch, Dutch auction. And that means you know, the big problem with Ethereum is that it can only do 90 transactions per second. So when you have everyone coming in in that first minute to grab th at, at the top price, 3.3, and they're definitely going to sell out. And they're, you know, look, I mean, the fastest one I think that I've heard of was 12 minutes, right? Maybe there's one that sold for eight minutes, completely sold out. But, you know, these, this project has so many superstars so many celebrities attached to it and have bought other pieces from him you know we're really buying almost like a warhol it's really incredible right but yeah. doing that dutch auction means everyone who's trying to get one is going to come in immediately together and the price of gas is just going to go through the roof i'm 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 guessing that it's going to be in the thousand dollar range but of course if you're paying 3.3 ETH, you know, $1,000 on top of that, you're probably willing to pay that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate. I mean, I'm really hoping that everything works out because, gosh, I mean, I don't know about you, Florian, but uh, I'm certainly putting it up for 400 ETH <laughs> even before it gets unwrapped. I'm holding on to it because I've seen what they are kind of offering with the auction uh yeah. and i think along the way they're going to offer like members like access to i don't know privilege regarding the art so and i really really do love the actual physical art which is really yeah. cool and and why not when i'm rich enough to buy one um but i'm really considering maybe trying to to get in those first 200 spot during the public auction so oh really yeah i'm i'm really i really love the art so i might to be honest. Oh, oh, yeah. well, okay. Well, you've really deep dived. How? Oh, wow. So you're willing to spend like four ETH for this thing? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's worth it, especially if you if you hit the first 200. Yeah. Uh, and having that, that that piece of art from that superstar artist, um, especially yeah. like he's, he's really into sports, as you, you probably followed the Twitter. Uh, with like especially tennis players because he played tennis as Djokovic said and, and, and basketball. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. And then owning one of his personal art would be really cool. Wow. Wow. So well, well, you I'm know, keep thing tomorrow and, and maybe transfer what I have in, into my wallet. What time does it start at, uh, for the public auction? Uh, it's Is it also? Oh, it's 6 p.m. Yeah. 6 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to take a look at no, that. No, it's not tomorrow. It's on Wednesday. It's the 13th. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. 13th. Um, and then I think the, I think the, for us, the, well, I, for the white list, I guess it's Friday. It's on the 14th. On the 14th. Okay. Oh, it's a Thursday. Thursday. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I so think. you're, you're, you've cleared your schedule. You're, you're ready for six o'clock on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Yeah. I have nothing that I'm aware of. Um, okay. Well, yeah. that's incredibly exciting. I'll think. I'll still think about it because it's it's a lot of of money and Ethereum that, but I think it will be worth it. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly. And then, and then, would you buy the second one on the whitelist? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because uh, it, it, we are on the whitelist, so we take a spot. There's only a limited number of, of, right. of listed people. So if I don't buy it, it's kind of like one that is lost. Yeah, I'll definitely buy it, and if I need to sell, it, I'll sell it. Right. Um, but I'm considering buying another one for sure. I think. Wow. And I really hope you get that statue. That would be incredible. That is an amazing piece of artwork. So, so Thursday. Thursday, the white list sale is at 3 p.m., but it's open for 24 hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it, 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 you, you have a hundred percent chance yeah. to buy the bungee for 24 hours. So, right, 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 because it's just yours. They're holding yeah. that one for you. Yeah, but it's this first 200. If you can get in, you have to get in exactly at 6 p.m. to get that first 200, because you know they're just going to fly yeah. off the shelves. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's amazing. It's incredible how this, um, it's not FOMO because we're doing our research and, and we're really <laughs> picking the projects. We're not just jumping in and buying stuff that, you know, we're, we're really researching the project and we know what we're looking for. And, and we happen to agreed, agreed on this project uh, that doesn't normally happen. Uh, yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful piece. And I think I, I really hope you get in. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be watching that, that auction. That's going to be amazing. Uh, let's talk. I want to talk for a second and kind of just change gears. Um, first of all, so I just, I, I just read this. This just came out. The Board Ape Yacht Club has recorded $542 million in lifetime sales. It's incredible. Wow, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> that means that it is, that these ten thousand or however many there are in the board eight yacht club have changed hands at such a pace and such a number of times to generate that five hundred and forty-two million. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. The, the, the other thing that I wanted to just mention to you, and and we didn't we haven't talked about this offline, is you know I'm in Discord all day. And I get these scam emails. Do you get these scam emails like I'm getting? No, yeah, not emails, but like direct messages. I yes. don't pay attention to them. I'm yes. just, I receive a look and I delay right away. Yeah, so it, I it, block it, them. It, yeah, it, it is it's kind of sketchy. Never answer those. Just like stick to your Discord and and try to like reach out to the right people. Don't, don't answer because a lot of people has been scammed and... Yeah. It's gonna keep increasing because of the potential of this 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 digital world. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of scary. And that's the amazing thing is that we are so early to this market, right? That all of these projects that we're getting involved with, you know, every single day, more people are understanding how to get into NFTs, how to have a wallet, how to put money into the wallet, how to. Uh, you know, buy an NFT and do research into the NFT. We're, you know, even being uh, a month ahead of everyone puts you at an incredible advantage. And it's really, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, really amazing. I went to Comic-Con this, uh, this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, I told you. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Do you know, uh, how was that? Um, it's a good reminder that I'm 50 uh, <laughs> because when I was, uh, in my 20s, I used to go to Comic-Con for all four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, doing Comic-Con one day is now definitely enough. Uh, walking that floor and uh, seeing all the uh, booths with all the stuff that I'm not going to buy uh, is all very interesting. What I thought was really interesting was I gave myself a project. I gave the team the project. We were all together. Um, to find uh, booths that were selling NFTs. And, and out of one, right? Just one. one. Yeah. Just one. This is the piece. Here I'll show you. Let's bring that up. So it's yeah. Bare Brain City. And you know, I just I wanted to purchase it for the simple reason that he was the only artist selling an NFT. He was the only booth selling an NFT. Um, now he the way that he wanted us to buy it was that we had to open up a POAP wallet, which is POAP basically means that you can verify that you were at an event, but you know, it was very difficult to do. And so he just eventually sent me 
uh, the discount, which was half price. So I bought it at 0.05 Ethereum, uh, okay. which was great. And, uh, you know, I love it. I, I love the art. I think the art is amazing. Uh, let's see if we can bring that up closer. And he was, he's a good artist. And he, in fact, did an NFT project that sold out. And I like that project as well. I can't remember what the name of that project is. Um, but yeah, this is the void. I think it's cute and it's, I like the coloring. Um, and so now there are nine owners. So I guess that there is one person who has to buy this and look, I mean, this isn't the kind of thing that I'm going to turn around and sell. This is really, you know, historical. This is the first, oh, he only has the property is 2018, which is interesting now that we're in 2021. Uh, no description, nothing like that. So it is definitely, but then again, it's not a generative art. It's not anything that, uh, you know, it's just its own piece. And I, I think it's great. And I think historically, the fact that it's the first NFT at New York Comic-Con is pretty amazing. What do you think? Did you like it? I did not like it. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be burned, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not my, my type, to be honest. I like, uh, yeah, maybe not a bit too colorful, but yeah, it's didn't. Is, yeah, didn't. I don't know. I don't. Know is it too childish for you? Not childish. I just. I don't know. Those aren't your colors. Not even colors. It's just like as I told you before. It's when I see something and I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. This was not really interesting to me. I was not wowed or really didn't pique my interest to look closer and then try to understand what was going on. So good. Well, that's a perfect segue into our next segment, which is uh, our project. The project. Yeah. So I sent this over to you and we're going to make this available so that everybody can see this. Let me pull this over into the center here. This is Morgan is working on Metacities. And what this is, is a collage of um, nine layers, nine traits. We've got the columns. We've got a front. We've got a house in the center, house on the right, house on the left, a background, a spaceship, and then planets. The spaceship uh, is extra. The planets are extra. Not all of them are going to have it. And in fact, not all are going to have the backgrounds. And again, this is just one example out of the 10,000 series that we're built building. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it's only one out of 10,000. Uh, how I'm, I'm just curious on how is, does it does, does it do it like one by one? Is it like generative art? Yeah. It is. It's generative art. It's generative art. So uh, it's, there it's, are. Yeah, it's it's funky. I, I, I prefer the collage that I have at home. Uh, um, I don't know if you could pull it up to show them, but. Yeah, I do prefer the one, but I'm sure they're going to have others that I'm going to be interested in because. Yeah, there's 10,000 of them, so there's like 10,000 right. different combination. Right. But do you do you like the? You can be honest. I mean, no, I like the I, I like the idea too. Yeah, really, I like the idea. Now the colors for me are like, do I really like this one? Maybe not. But again, like when I purchase one, I don't know what I'm gonna get. So, <laughs> right. So they are all going to be wrapped uh, until everything has sold, and then we will unwrap that for everyone. Uh, you know, which is a great way to do it because you don't know what you're buying. And at the same time, you're committing to being part of the project. Yeah. So we're going to let people whitelist into um, the Discord. They can get into the Discord at Trigonal Gallery. Um, they can follow us on Linktree and, and find out all that. Let's bring up the piece that you have. So this is back at home, limited edition print. Uh, Florian bought the, uh, the physical piece, which I, I think at the time was 500. It was 500. Yes. Was five, so, okay. So it's gone up a little bit since then. It's about 600 now. And, uh, this pricing, 
was done because oh right 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 because this is an old piece that was launched um when 2.9 ethereum was 500 dollars, and the price of ethereum has doubled since that time so i should probably reset this to uh to 500 dollars. and with this you get the nft as well as the physical print and the physical yeah. print we have a couple left uh so yeah this is a really beautiful piece let me see. I don't think I can zoom in now, but uh, in fact, Morgan wanted to use this rainbow and the sun in the project that he's doing now. And I said, no, you can't, you can't reuse any of the pieces. I think, I think the rainbow and the sun would be cool to be honest. He, yeah, but there are other rainbows. He wanted to take yeah. that specific piece it, like that. It, it, that's why I like this piece because there's a lot going on. It's a big, big piece. I don't know if you have the dimension, but. I I think I also did a good job framing it because I chose colors that kind of um, make the whole piece come comes to life uh, with uh, like orange border and then the, the frame is black, which is really cool. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. So so the so the uh, size is thirty by forty inches, which is really a tremendous size. Um, you know, I didn't want to interject my opinion when you went to the framer. Um, we were very nervous when you told us that you got orange, but then when you showed it to us, it looks amazing. I mean, it's, it's not your typical, you know, black or gray or brown frame. It really matches that the color consistency in, in the piece and it pops the piece amazingly. Well, it looks fantastic. I'm still sad. It's, I'm still sad it's somewhere in storage. Yeah, well, for now, because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know my, my situation where I'm going to be in the future. So I think it's safe in the storage and, and I'll hang it out when, when I have my own place. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, so in addition to uh, that little thing that I bought at Comic-Con, there is a new project that I'm going to purchase if I still have uh, money left over after the Bonji. I wanted to just show that. Well, um, well, maybe talk a little bit more about your project. Like, what's the timeline? Where where are you guys at right now? Uh, if you do have a timeline, um, we do. We do have a timeline. So um, you know, it's been very hard to find a developer. Uh, I have a. I have multiple degrees. One of those degrees is a master of science. So I spent all of Sunday learning how to write the code for everything that we need to be able to do the, the piece, um, which is, you know, you know, when you, <laughs> you know, when you're, when your brain is going in one direction, right? Like for you, for like soccer, right? Like, so you're constantly focused. You're like, so, you know, every single thing about the game, you know, everything, like all that stuff, right? When you have to shift and start like focusing on something else you, that, that you knew before, like whatever it is, like whether it's French or whether it's whatever, whatever it is, you have to uh, kind of, you know, switch your brain around to kind of reactivate that that memory of. Yeah, it's you know, hard to get going. It's 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 the same with me when you talk about French. When I go home, I have a hard time. It takes me like a week or two to get back to actually thinking in French and putting good sentences in French because my right now my brain is wired in English. I think right. I talk in English. Yeah. Uh, so I totally understand where you're coming from on that. Yeah, yeah. So the great thing about YouTube is that when you wind up down one of these silos, right? And and look, people could go to like flat earth silos and, you know, they turn on YouTube and everything is about flat earth or you can vaccinations or, or BS like that. I'm in this NFT technology silo where I turn on YouTube and that's all that I see mm -hmm. essentially. And so there have been videos about like solidity and the technology and everything like that. But the other day about, I guess, Wednesday of last week, I was clicking through and it said like everything that you need to know to do your NFT project. And it was like uh, two and a half hours. 
And so I sat down and I watched, you know, two hours worth. I have 40 minutes left to, to you know, absorb all that information. And it was, it's literally step by step. He does such an incredible job that, you know, I'm confident that I will be able to write this myself. So if that, if that makes anybody scared, please understand that, you know, I was in the dot coms. I built the internet from the, from the get go. I know what I'm doing. Uh, now that we have me as the developer and we've got the marketing team and Morgan is, you know, 98% done with the imagery, um, we will be able to do uh, the mint. Uh, we're in like the second week of October now. So by the end of October, we will have minted and we will be able to put everything up on OpenSea. Uh, but it won't be mintable until we're actually going to wait until probably the week before Christmas, the, the 22nd, the 17th, 18th, 19th, something like that. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is we need to build up our discord. We need to build up our discord. We need to get my audience interested. The ones that we are on the newsletter, uh, the ones that are on YouTube and the ones that are on uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter and get everybody excited to be able to do the whitelist. Because for us, you know, launching a project, and I hear about this every single day, people launch these 10,000 generative pieces and they sell 200. We're going we're gonna to look at one right now, right, after this. So the idea then is to launch it in mid to end of December giving us enough time to do the promotion, uh, both, you know, with talking to journalists and doing all that stuff, getting the marketing really good so that, you know, we get those 2000 people into the whitelist. They will have the ability to buy five. We're going to be selling these at 0.05 ETH. And what that will do is either everyone that comes in at the 2000 will buy five and that will be the end of the, we won't really have a public, but more likely than not, I'm assuming that 50% of the people will buy five and then the other thousand people will buy one, maybe two, right? So then it'll go public uh, close to Christmas. And uh, then, then we have the next side of the marketing, which is probably more exciting than the first side of the marketing, right? So if we've made a good amount of money, then... We're going to do the rarity tools. So uh, we got to spend some money on that. Got to spend like about seven grand on getting them to give us the rarity scores so that all, you know, everybody understands what the rarity scores are. And then the remaining marketing money is going to actually go. We want to be like the first NFT sold out fine art uh, uh, project that uh, is advertising in like real art magazines, like Art in America, um, you know, Collage, uh, you know, we really want to be like right there so that people can see, hey, this fine art generative art piece sold out in whatever it is, 12 minutes, two weeks, whatever it might be. Uh, but that will kind of stimulate the secondary art market, the secondary market of, of the pieces. And that'll hopefully bring some attention to the project. So okay. there's a lot of work between today and when we're actually launching, but the physical pieces will probably be ready by the end of October. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a look at, uh, I wanted to show you this. Um, this is called Roosh Rooms. Roosh, Roosh Rooms? Anyway, so this is the guy that did the video on how to um, how to build out your own NFT collection, you know, development tools and everything like that. Now, what he's doing here, now this is an interesting thing. Okay, so let's read this. So uh, what does being on the gift list mean? Well, every mint kicks off a process where someone's wallet address gets randomly selected from the gift list and 10% of the NFT cost is transferred to the post person automatically. Wow, yeah, we know this is pretty cool. And the more you mint, the more times your wallet address gets added to the list. But that is not all. 
at the very last mint, one person receives the ultimate gift, 10%, roughly 11 ETH of the entire contract's balance gets transferred to a select person if the collection sells out in 10 days of launch. And so what's interesting is that he is a very, he's very, his YouTube is technology drill driven, right? So the people that are watching his YouTube are technologists. They're people that are looking to him to show us how to do the development. He actually has a YouTube video about how to do this 10% and 10% and everything like that and add that to the, uh, to the metadata. Um, but, you know, I've been watching this for three days now, Sunday, Monday. Yes. Yeah, so like, you know, three, two, three days. Um, it's gone up a little bit. It's probably not going to hit the 5,000, uh, in the 10 days, but, uh, I'm definitely going to buy one because I want to support him. I may buy two, uh, but I would like it if, you know, people went in and bought this. I think that for 0.02 ETH, these are pretty cute guys. They don't have, he doesn't have, um, on the video, he shows exactly what these are. And uh, so that's more of like, you know, hey, I want to support this guy. And uh, if it winds up that he sells all 5,000 in 10 days, that would be pretty good. But listen, you know, he sold 261. Let's do the math on this. So 0.025 times 261 is 6.52. The average Ethereum is about, let's just say $3,000. So he's already made $20,000. I mean, that's the amazing things about these projects, right? This isn't a 10,000 series. He could have probably done a thousand series, cut it down to, to about a thousand. He, he was guessing on all this, but you know, you sell a couple, you make money. Like if you, yeah. you know, I, 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 that's, what's amazing to me. Like, you know, these projects don't have, if they sell out, sure, that's $1.4 million. That's a lot of money that you have to now deal with. You know, we're about to talk about Magic, Magic Mushrooms Clubhouse, right? Uh, you know, they're, uh, they're kind of hitting up against a wall. I'm going to bring this up for us in a second. So they do not have a blue check mark yet. Mm -hmm. And they really should. There is a suspicion that the reason why they don't have a blue check mark is because they are promising to be a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though, and this is so another YouTube influencer mentioned this, that the projects that are claiming that they are going to be a DAO in the future are not getting the blue check mark because OpenSea is concerned that DAOs relating to NFTs may be securities. And maybe what? Securities. So oh. like, like the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission would come in and declare these as securities. Um, now look, the SEC hasn't said anything. They haven't laid down the law yet, but that seems to be the reason why they may not be getting their blue check mark. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, I'm thrilled with this. I'm thrilled with this project. I, I support them 100%. Uh, we wanted to do some work with them. They're just, you know, very, very, very busy. You know, well, look, when, when you, you know, nothing is, nothing is free in this world, right? When yeah. you do a project of 10,000 NFTs and you make $1.4 million, that community wants you to be responsible and responsive to the work that you've put in to build that community. Yeah. So they have a lot of pressure on them. And I think what they did was they were like, oh, yay, let's build a DAO. And they didn't really kind of think it through legally. You know, I have lawyers and accountants. That's the difference is that, you know, I get on the phone with my lawyer and I say to him, you know, well, it's two, two lawyers. The one that I'm dealing with with the Dow is a, a female lawyer. Um, you know, 
they have to get up to speed. They're not, they don't even really understand what a DAO is, right? They have to understand what the limitations are. And then they have to come back to me and, and say whether or not I'm going to be in deep trouble if I try to make a DAO because the SEC is going to come after me as a security. Now, here's the plan. And I'm saying this verbally. This will probably, you know, be it's now 50 minutes into the conversation. So, you know, a lot of people aren't going to hear this. We are not going to say that we are going to become a DAO in the uh, roadmap, which is what Magic Mushroom said. Okay. But we are going to become a DAO at some point. Um, but Trigonal would become the DAO, not necessarily just Meta Cities. So that's how we're going to separate it. So, in other words, if you have an NFT from Morgan's project, at some point when Trigonal switches over to become a DAO, people who are holding the NFT will receive tokens for Trigonal, not okay. for MetaCities, not for Morgan's project. They will receive Trigonal DAO tokens. Okay. And so we're verbally explaining that, but we're not writing it in any of the documentation because we there, there's a very big possibility that these NFT projects that have now said that they're going to become a DAO, first of all, are now researching what goes into making a DAO. It is not easy. It is a very complicated process. Um, and then it is a very complicated process from the legal side of things and then the accounting side of things. So, you know, look, if they get hit as with the SEC, that's millions and millions and millions of dollars that have to go into, you know, working with the SEC to prove that you're doing the securities correctly. It's a huge undertaking. So we're going to sidestep that by just verbally explaining that at some point in the future, Trigonal will Trigonal LLC mm -hmm. will become Trigonal DAO. And what that is, and so let me give you like the two sentences of what a DAO would allow you to, so you're holding one of Morgan's pieces and we come back to you and you and we say, okay, that's going to give you a thousand tokens into the DAO. And yeah, yeah. that thousand tokens will allow you to have one vote on everything that is going to be voted on. Because in a DAO, it's very kind of like socialist and mm -hmm. everything gets voted on, right? It's great and it's not great because everything needs to be voted on. If my uh, marketing director wants to spend money on, um, on advertising, she has to write a proposal that then goes to the DAO and people vote on it. So, and then she gets paid from the DAO. She doesn't get paid from Trigonal. It's okay. very, very complicated, right? And it's not something that, you know, look, everybody is running a million miles a minute. Everybody is picking up these new, uh, these new concepts and these new word catchphrase words. And so I understand that, like, without doing research, everybody's saying, I'm going to become a DAO. Uh, yeah, sure. Magic Mushrooms became a DAO. And maybe they didn't fully understand the undertaking that that would require and the risk of being an SEC in their in SEC's uh eyesight um mm -hmm. so that's that's you know an interesting aspect of the project but i think it also says something about you know small teams that are trying to figure all this stuff out right now right yeah finally let's talk about panda dynasty okay. let's get that in front of us okay so panda dynasty so we just watched a uh youtube video from the owner of the Panda Dynasty. He's and, the and here, uh, That guy, what was that guy's French. name? Yeah. Yeah, oh. the whole team is French. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Ganon, Ganondorf? Uh, I don't remember his name. <laughs> I have it on, uh, I have, uh, I, I followed him on, on YouTube. Um, so he doesn't have it up here which is a little bit of a surprise to me. Oh, wait, let's see. Maybe the universe. Can I click through that? No. Um, but here's, so, so let's walk through this. So uh, that 
that YouTube video showed that they were going to do like a map, which is very similar to what uh, Magic Mushrooms is also doing. Now they're doing it. This is interesting. Their map, which is also like five points, the first point uh, you can buy 2,500 NFTs and then you become a group and then you jump through another hoop and you do this other thing. And then finally you get to level four where there's probably, I think there's only four NFTs to be minted. And then you get to solve a riddle and the first person that solves the riddle gets to buy the NFT. And then they win $50,000 from board uh, from uh, magic mushrooms. Right. I mean, it's all cool, but that's a lot of management. That's a lot of maintenance that has to go into that project. Right. So from, uh, from Panda Dynasty, what they're doing is on October 30th, every panda is going to be matched with an airdropped NFT of a pumpkin. Now, I don't know if this is a pumpkin panda, if it's just a pumpkin by itself, whatever it might be, right? But that to me, you know, even just by itself says to me, well, maybe I'll buy another panda because that'll mean that I currently have two pandas. I would then get another pumpkin. So I would wind up with three pumpkins, which is pretty awesome. Then they're going to have a thing where you can combine the, um, the panda with the pumpkin to get some, uh, it becomes some other new, you know, one of one kind of NFT piece. What you, you, you listen to it, right? What, what am I missing there? Uh, I don't know, actually. I have to listen again because I was I was coming out of training and I was trying to listen in the car. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm actually on the website trying to like find more information. Yeah, it's uh, not on the website. It's in his YouTube video. Yeah, you, do you remember what price was the mint? Uh, well, so I didn't mint it. Uh, I bought it in the secondary market and I bought it for, I believe, 0 0.02 because I just bought the floor. Um, and I would buy the floor now too, because uh, it's not the most popular. And so that, that's what I wanted to also say was that here's another case of another team that pulled it together, did their discord, built the generative art, got it out there. It did sell out. I think it, I think it took like, you know, a couple of days to sell out. Um, and then they started getting all of these questions from the community. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you coming out with next? And they were really kind of caught off guard. They didn't understand that, you know, they thought this was just, you put it in there, people buy it, and that's it. The idea of utility, the idea that holding this is somehow going to give you added features and added benefits um, didn't really occur to them. So they're, they came out with like, a very quickly drawn comic book uh, in five parts. Uh, now they're kind of getting into the idea of what do they need to do next? And I think that that's where the Halloween thing comes in. That's where the merging of the two NFTs come in. Uh, and there was something else. There, there's something I'm missing. There's something else that I'm missing. Maybe there's a companion. Yes, there's a baby panda. And I think that you can buy the baby panda in January, something like that. I mean, that's what makes it fun. That's what's, that's what's exciting about all this, right? Is that, you know, you're now part of a community of only 10,000 or 8,000 or 7,000, whatever the number is. And uh, you're going to collect that, in, that stuff from that collection until you get bored and you want to move on to another collection or something like that. No, what are your thoughts? It's pretty cool, actually. Um, I'm looking at it. I really like the art. I like the fact that you can play some kind of game with riddles and, and make it interactive. Uh, so why not? And the floor price is pretty affordable. Do you think you would buy one? Yeah, if I found one that I really like, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks and you've really kind of never suggested that you would purchase one. Yeah, I was trying to get like I was trying to mint them. Um, I didn't know how they were gonna do on the secondary market. It's not too high right now. No. So 
No, but you know, this is the thing, like Board Ape Yacht Club, everybody now knows Board Ape Yacht Club going for millions of dollars, but you know, that project has been around for four years. That project was around for a while and now it's finally getting notoriety and it's gaining, you know, traction. It's very possible that with the Panda Dynasty, it could take three years, whatever it takes. You know, look, CryptoPunks, they were given out for free originally in 2017 and now they're worth millions and millions. So you just it's the kind of thing where if you hold on to it, uh, you know, it's probably worth it. I'll tell you, I'm I'm, I got to go back to the Bonji project because. I don't know. To me, I mean, it's great that you're going to spend the money to try to grab the fir- one of the first 200. That's awesome, right? Um, I'm a little bit more of a poor man on this. I'm not going to like dive deep into, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of investment. But, you know, I am going to put it up for 400 ETH, which would be $1.4 million. Uh, and if somebody wants to buy it, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to buy it at that range. So then we'll wait until it gets unlocked and really check the rarity scores and everything like that. But I mean, you know, here's the thing, like, you know, let's say that I could even sell it for, I don't know, what would I let it go for? 50 ETH? I would probably let it, like after all the rarities are done and everything like that and there's and there was good pricing. Let's see, so if I could sell it for 50 ETH, 50 that, would, that would be $150,000. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's, you know, yeah. I, that's a great story to like be able to say like, hey, you know, I uh, just paid off my mortgage. <laughs> that that would be pretty incredible, but I don't think it would. Yeah, I don't think you know, it would. What, what do you think's going to, what do you think the top is going to be? I think the floor price is going to be, could be six to seven ETH in the first place. Uh Without wrap, with uh, not wrap, uh, wrapped, wrapped, yeah, wrapped, and then right. on wrap. You've seen with Makerverse, they they sold for like they minted for point two, and now the floor price is like six, six point eight ETH, I think, or something like that. So it's time, so times five times it's time thirty, pretty much, almost times forty. Well, it's funny five. because you know, I, until you know, doing my research and coming into the NFT market. I always thought it was crazy that somebody would spend the money to mint something, double the price, even though they couldn't see it, and let something go like that, right? But now I understand that it's a little bit more of a game where if you do have five and you can double your price before the unwrapping, because once it's unwrapped, the risk is that you have something that's more common than is rare. And so yours will fit more into the floor than at the top number. And even at the top number, that means that the, that the project has to do well in order for people to be very, very interested in buying that top number. Okay. It all just depends on, you know, at that point, after all of that is unwrapped, it just is going to be a question of what the community what the company itself, the project is going to do from that point to gain like notoriety. Yeah. Well, let's see what happened on, uh, cause I don't know when the reveal is. Yeah. I don't know either. I mean, I'm, I'd assume it's probably Saturday or Sunday. If everything gets sold out by Thursday, then I mean, I think you would do. It's weird because like, I'll tell you, I have a piece that's sitting in my wallet that I got from um, tryshowtime.com, which is owned by Mark Cuban. And I was one of the first people that signed up for that. And so I got this NFT and it was given to me free and I just had to pay them for the gas. And back then the gas was very cheap. Um, And every once in a while I keep going in and I try to refresh the metadata thinking that maybe what I'm looking at is the wrapper for the piece. And it's been a very, very, it's been months. And if that's what it is, I'll show it to you on the, uh, I'll pull this up. There you go. That's the NFT. Now to me, that looks like it's a wrapper, but this is, this is what they gave me. 
Okay, that's weird. Okay. Right. It's bizarre, right? Because yeah. that's not any that's not a design that's interesting to anybody. Mm -hmm. And yet if I hit uh refresh metadata, nothing happens. I mean, that is the image. Okay. Well that's I don't know why that sale ends April 11th, April 11th, 2022. By now? It's not yours? Maybe I put it up. No, no. Well, it is mine, but somebody is selling it. It's definitely mine. It's in my wallet. Uh, if I go back, it's in the wallet. Um, maybe... They couldn't do a full year reveal, could they? That would be ridiculous. This is 181 days. And somebody's selling this. So there's 2.9 thousand owners. Do you um, do you remember that um, NFT I was talking to you about Loopy Donuts? Not like not that it's coming up in my head. Do you have it? Where should I go? Uh, on OpenSea, but they they actually sold out. Oh, really? Yep. And they are they are doing a, they are also doing a, a DAO. They are. Yep. Interesting. And do they have a blue check mark? Uh, do not think so. No, they don't. They do not. So I think that that's what's preventing them. Wow! Look at that. That's not bad. That is, the trading volume is pretty good. The floor price is pretty good. Do you know, uh, are you on their Discord? Do you have? No, I, I was, but I didn't know if I really wanted to buy any. Uh, but I think the, I think the mint was at 0.02. I yeah. Think. Oh, po Originally, the mint was 0.02. 0.02 or 0.05. Oh, look at that. So it's actually gone up significantly. Yeah, yeah. It was not that high. Now it's coming back down again. That's interesting. That's some good movement. And somebody's buying the... They're not buying the floor. They're buying specific pieces. Oh, see, this is all cropping out. Yeah. So the transaction... Well, yeah, the transaction fee was 0 0.15, 0 0.015. Point oh, point oh, oh, 0 0.015. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Almost 0 0.07, like 0 0.07, yeah. So that's like $100. And uh, $60. Oh, 60 and The gas fee was like $100 pretty much. But you see, if you like, so the best time to mint something like that is Sunday evening. That's okay. when the least number of people you never want to you never want to mint during the work hours, including California time, because everybody's on there. Everybody's buying stuff. But you see, this is this kind of goes back to the Bonji, right? So if I can make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, like obviously that would pay down a lot of debt and stuff like that. But I could even just apply twenty thousand dollars of ETH to be able to now expand beyond the, the, the projects that I'm involved with now, the NFT projects that I'm involved with now, it'd be easy for me to pick up two donuts. It'd be, it'd be a no-brainer, right? But right now, that, that movement into my wallet uh, is such a pain. It's, it's limiting me, and then the gas is limiting me as well. Yeah. They really, they have to figure that out, but that's a whole other story. Okay, my friend, 910. I think we've had a good show. We've talked a lot about a lot of things. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, for now, no, not really. I'm just trying to like figure out how you make offers on, on OpenSea because I've never done that. Mm. And then usually like it, it gives me three options, which is W-E-T-H, uh, D-A-I, and then USDSC. Um but I have Ethereum on my MetaMask wallet, so I don't know how you do that. Um, so WETH is wrapped Ethereum. And it is like, it's the classic Ethereum. So it's not as valuable. So when you make an, 
when you so in this case, if you're going to make an offer, um, and I think we talked about the forty percent less than what they're currently offering, right? That's what you basically want to do. You yeah. want to drop it by forty percent. You can make that offer in ETH, and then what will transfer is WETH. I don't really know why they do that because if you just bought it outright, it would be Ethereum. But when you make an offer, it becomes WETH. I'm not sure why OpenSea does that. Okay. Yeah. But which which ones is that? The donut? You're going to buy the donut with that? No, maybe the panda. There's a bundle with the number four hundred eighty and four hundred eighty-one. Ooh. And then the price is point oh seventy-five, so it's two hundred and sixty dollars. Oh wow! Um, How did you find that bundle? What'd you do? You did. You do instead of like single items, you do bundle. Interesting. I've never been able to do that. Let me see. So the panda. I think he had offers. An offer expired at one ten, which is fifty percent. Yeah. Let me do. You also have to be careful with those bundles sometimes because uh, people can fake, you know, they can make their own. Just make sure that you're in the Panda Dynasty collection. I'm bringing this up now. Yeah, they have the check mark next to it to them. Oh, it does. You should you should look it up on the, you sh it should okay. be the first one that comes up. Okay, this so we got, oh yeah, they have the blue check mark. Okay, so you, instead of looking for single items, you change this to bundles. I've never thought about doing that. The thing is, when I put the offer in uh, wrap Ethereum, I have, yeah. I have zero like on my balance. Zero. Well, I, I zero. think we should do that offline, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, now I'm confused. So why, what, why is this pulling in other things other than Panda Dynasty? It. I see these. So this is together. But oh, this is six pandas. That doesn't look legit. This is super rare. Save on gas. Point two five. Panda Dynasty set of four for 0.25. Let's look at this. And then I don't know why the NFT starter pack is coming up. I don't know. I'm a little wary of. So $884 and you get Panda Dynasty one of four. Oh, okay. Well, it has this has the blue check mark next to it. So you know that it's interesting. Wow. How easy? How easy is it to fake a blue check mark? No, it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. Because you see how this is being brought in over here next to the Panda Dynasty? Yeah. This is this is verification, verified collection. So it says that it is a real Panda Dynasty piece. Yeah. And you could probably click through and take a look at it and make sure that it's, yeah, yeah. And you could see who owned it first. There's a lot of that data. That's good to see where, where it's been, the provenance. So they minted this. They minted this themselves on the day of whenever it must have launched. Uh, and then somebody offered them 0 0.02 and 0 0.02 from these two guys. These are wrapped Ethereum because it's in the, yeah, it's WETH. And now he's bundling it all together. It's not, you know, listen, I mean, you definitely save on the gas. That's a that's a pretty good reason to, to do this. No, of course. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. That's the end of our show. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you've made it this far, uh, this has been a lot of fun. We will be back next Monday. Uh, if not, we'll be back the following Monday in case of you know, our schedules don't allow for it. If you have any questions, uh, if 
you've been watching and you've been asking questions in the uh, uh, in, in the comment section and we just haven't been checking it, uh, go ahead and we'll look at it now or send us a tweet. You can find me at Trigonal Gallery uh, on Twitter and Florian Below. Do you have a dash between the uh, Florian and the Below? An underscore? underscore. On yeah. So it's Florian underscore Below. Um, and we will see you here next week. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye.